boats and harbors, the smell of the sea, and the huge sky above the northeast coast. Lovely, just the way it ought to be. But when it comes to finding the town center, that's a different story, because here, everything's topsy-turvy. It's one of the most confusing towns I've ever been in, but there's a reason for that. It's history. Modern Blythe is made up of two distinct 19th century towns, South Blythe and Coupon, that were separated for years by a muddy tidal stream, Blythe Gut. About 80 years ago, all this was dramatically changed. The last of the stone bridges that had linked the town since 1815 was removed. The gut was filled in, and Coupon and South Blythe were brought together, united at last under a single Blythe Council. That view of 1896 was painted from just here, beside what is appropriately called Union Street, because it's the street that brought the two towns together. Behind me is the Methodist Chapel of 1869, and beneath the street, the gut still flows into the River Blythe. But originally, on either side of the stream, each town had its own centre. Down Waterloo Road, Coupon Centre was a marketplace surrounded by 19th century brick shops. It was enlarged after the war by the demolition of the terraced houses that once stood here. And so, though it looks traditional, it's not really very old. It's had a heart transplant. The old centre of Blythe, on the other hand, has quite a different feel to it. More public buildings and banks than shops. The splendid 1895 police station looks a bit like old Scotland Yard in London. The Blythe Harbour Commissioner's headquarters is a Baroque building of 1913, and Lloyd's Bank dates from about the same time. And so, throughout the newly united towns of Blythe and Coupon, there are good bits to enjoy. It's churches, for instance. And this one with the tremendous spire. It's the United Reformed Church, which was built on Waterloo Road in 1876. It's built of brick, as you can see. Now, it's not all that unusual to find a brick church, but when you see one on this scale and with this subtlety, it fills you with admiration. I mean, look at the, look at the boldness and the drama of those great louvered bell openings and the long, elongated gargoyles. The inspiration for them seems to be from the great French cathedrals. What a good set of houses Blythe has, too. A rich collection of well-built and finely detailed Victorian and Edwardian semis, typical of what might be found in the best suburbs anywhere in England. But Bath Terrace is something else. The central building that has given the terrace its name contained cold and warm and vapour baths about 150 years ago no doubt used by the well-off ship owners who lived in the rest of the terrace. But what's that sticking up over the roof? I'll bet you don't have one of these in your back lane. So it's a lighthouse. In fact, it's the oldest lighthouse in the northeast. It was built in 1788 with some very pretty Gothic touches, which are absolutely typical of that date. And it used to carry a, a coal-fired beacon to uh, guide the ships into the river mouth. The shore of the river was much closer to where we are now in those days, but since then it's had to be raised twice to make it visible over the new buildings. And it's been converted successively to oil and gas and finally to electricity. The old light now looks down on a very much changed river mouth and harbour. But there's still one ferry left. It goes across to Camus and it saves a nine mile walk round. Although Blythe has been a major salt, wood and coal port for over 250 years, its present harbour works date from after 1882, when the Harbour Commission was set up. It's a thriving modern port, still handling 7 million tonnes of coal a year, and a booming trade in grain and timber. But the old South Harbour still survives from the age of steamers, and it's full of exciting maritime goodies. 
the German sheds built by First World War German prisoners, gaunt brick headquarters of submariners from the Second World War, fishermen's huts hallowed by generations of use, a ship's chandlery in what was once the herring ring where the fish were auctioned. It's terrific. What a place for a film location. In fact, the more I think about it, the more I think of Blythe in film terms. I've never seen anything like these outside of a James Bond movie. They're very dramatic. There's no secret about them, really. They're the silos where Alcans store their imported alumina powder. That's another significant ingredient of the harbour activity. But if you look back onto Blythe from the camera's side, you're looking back into history. This is a real industrial landscape that's rapidly disappearing in the northeast as traditional jobs go down the tube. Bates Colliery will soon be only a memory, as Blythe's mining townscape is being laid to rest. But I can feel myself getting nostalgic about Blythe Power Station, its famous cathedral of industry and monument to the brave new world of the 1940s and 1950s. The power station is fueled by coal, and coal is still exported from these vast wooden staiths. They're one of only two left in the northeast, and they're listed so they can't be pulled down. To my mind, this is a fantastic structure, massive and powerful, thrusting out into the harbor and thrusting slightly up into the sky like a, like a massive launching ramp. It's got as many timbers as a forest. They're old and green and weathered. I just love it. The harbour authorities would like to pull them down, and I can see why they should think that they stand in the way of modernising the port. But change, certainly, and decay, unfortunately, are all part of the rich pageant of our townscapes. And it has to be admitted that decay even sometimes has an engaging picturesque quality, a sort of romance tinged with sadness. But I'm not going to end my portrait of Blythe in the past because that just wouldn't be fair to the town. In the twin centres of the town, there's a bustle and a busyness and a vitality, a feeling that the show must go on, come what may. At the Walla Cinema, a dynamic new management has pulled the picture-goers back. The enterprise and the name of the Phoenix Theatre, flourishing as never before, says it all. The town has a spirit all of its own. Blithe spirit. <laughs>